cut and fill. These are the terms that are usually used when you are working with a sloped site. What's it all about? Fundamentally, in order to build a house, we need flat ground, right? So if you have a sloped site, whichever direction, whether it's to the street or away from the street, vice versa, we need to somehow create flat platform for the house slab foundation to be built on, okay? So a cut, meaning that we are going to cut the natural ground in a certain location, and a fill means we are going to backfill in another location. Together, you'll end up with the building platform for your slab to be built on. So there are three common scenarios for each sloped site in terms of cut and fill. One is we follow the natural ground meaning we cut somewhere, we backfill, or we cut into locations, right? What that gives you is steps inside the house or also drop edge beams within your slab. Um, basically, that results to a few steps inside a house. So if you've been to a house and there are steps within the lounge room to get to the living room or vice versa, these are um, slabs that followed natural ground. Option number two, is where you drop the entire house into the into the site that's where you end up with retaining walls whether it's at the back or the side of the house option number three you end up with an elevated slab an elevated slab is where i do not want to have steps inside the house and i do not want to have retaining walls around my um, my property as well and that's where you end up with an elevated slab. So let me take you through what we've done here at Ride and why we've opted in for an elevated slab as opposed to the other two options. As you can see here behind me, this is an elevated slab. So that brick is carrying the house slab. Here's the house slab, okay, all the way through. This level of bricks, the reason of that height, because if we go all the way to the back, so that's the slab, keeps going. See how it's all dropping? All right, that's the slab there, keeps going. And then we end up here at the back. So the intention here and what the client wanted was that when they open their kitchen door, the living space door, they access the backyard on the same level because they have a pool also behind me. So the reason I've dropped down because essentially, see that last step here, that level ground, that's going to continue the landscaping all the way through to the kitchen level door, right? So here's the kitchen level opening. So the first two options, if we were to have dropped the house down and build a retaining wall, there would have been a retaining wall where that line is if the house was dropped because it would need to drop about that distance, six to 700 mil, right? A retaining wall would ruin that backyard. Mind you, that would have been the easiest option. The second option, it would have created steps inside the house. I'll take you through and then you'll see. But the client wanted to have a complete um, open space uh, with no, no, no internal steps um, within the house. So that's, that's pretty much it. So we went for an elevated slab and to offer them that solution. So it's not rocket science. It's not hard to do. It's just a matter of time, a bit of thinking, planning, and you've got the right solution for your, you've got the right solution for your family build. So simple as that. Hopefully that makes sense. Three scenarios, follow natural ground, drop into the ground, or an elevated slab. See you on the next video.